Welcome to Lightning Web Components, and we're going to talk about how you use the Salesforce CLI when you're developing web components. So let's get started. Your first step should be to make sure that you've installed the Salesforce CLI, which is the command line interface that lets you work with the org of your choice and helps you automate how you're working with your orgs. So you want to make sure that you're downloading the right version for whatever machines you're running, and that is your first stop. Your next stop should be your IDE of choice. And in this case, I'm using Visual Studio Code. We've created several integrations with Visual Studio Code that let you get at the Salesforce CLI as well as other tools while you're working in Visual Studio Code. So the first thing I wanna do is look at my project. I have a Salesforce DX project, and as you can see, I've already created several different Lightning Web components. So the first step is, how do I get this from just existing on my local machine and existing in a development environment. So I want to show you how to connect with what we call a scratch org. So I've created a scratch org in the command line, and I'll show you the history here in my terminal. I use the force org create command, and I just created a basic scratch org. The configuration is also included in my project. I use the default value. And now the next step is to push what's on my local computer to the scratch org. So I'm going to use a force source push command to do this. And let's work with the CLI in a different way. I'm going to use the command palette. And here you can see it's essentially a shortcut to all the CLI commands that I can run. And I want to push source to my default scratch org, this org I just created. So behind the scenes now, the CLI is running this force source push command for me and sending all the metadata that's on my local machine in this project up to my scratch org. This might take a couple minutes to complete, so just hang in there. And you can see the twin of this command is the pull, pull source from the default scratch org. And this command will use the metadata that's defined in your project and will pull down any diffs. Anything that's changed on in the cloud on the remote server will get pulled down to your local machine. Additionally, you'll get new metadata if you've created something declaratively that isn't in your machine. And the way you control what gets pulled down, let's say you've added something remotely that you don't want to sync back to your machine, is in the force ignore file. And you can see here we're excluding a few different kinds of metadata in this project so that I don't pull it down anytime I run a force source pull. Okay, so that's how you work with scratch orgs, or as we call them, source tracked orgs. But how do you work with another org like a sandbox or a developer edition org? That's an entirely different set of source commands. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to open up the terminal again. And instead of working with a scratch org, we're going to clear this out. And now this time, I want to send all this metadata to a developer edition org or a sandbox a non-source tracked org. So I'm going to use the command sfdx force source deploy. And this command's a little different than push because I can't just say force source deploy. The deploy command requires you to give the CLI a bit more information about what you want to deploy. So in this case, I could use the p flag to say, please deploy everything that's in my project. I could also use the M flag to then specify a single piece of metadata or a list of metadata. You can also give a path, a relative path, to somewhere on your computer if you want to push just a particular folder. If you're not sure how to run a command, I suggest getting the parent command, in this case, force source deploy, or you could even just run it at force source, and then run the command in the terminal with the double dash help. This is going to not only give you the syntax for the command, but you're going to get an explanation of what this command actually does, when to use it, and the flags that are relevant to this command, both their long and short forms. I often find myself running this command, especially if I just don't quite remember the syntax. Now that we've found out a little bit more about our command, let's go ahead and run it. I'm going to give us a little more real estate and clear out my terminal. And now I'm going to run an sfdx force source deploy command. And I'm going to use that P flag because I already have a project defined here. And I'm going to tell the CLI to just go ahead and deploy my force app directory, the main project folder. I can pass other parameters for weight. I could pass other parameters to give me the output in a different format. 
but I'm just going to tell it also what org explicitly to work with. That U parameter says the org I want to work with is, and I'm going to send it to a developer edition org that I've created. So I gave it an alias of recipes-de, so I could remember that it's a developer edition. And now we're going to deploy this to my developer edition org. And again, this could take several minutes to complete. OK, and now the command line has returned the results. And you can see that we've added a whole bunch of metadata to my developer edition org. And again, this could be a sandbox or the developer environment of your choice. But now I've taken what's on my machine and I've put it in this developer edition org. And again, this command has a twin. I used deploy right here to push all of what was on my local file system into the cloud. If I want to grab stuff out of my sandbox onto my local machine, the twin of this command is a force source retrieve command. And you can use the same flags that you use on deploy to determine what metadata it is that you're going to retrieve from the org to pull down, say, something someone did in Lightning App Builder or declaratively. And again, what gets pulled and what gets worked with will be limited by what you put in the force ignore. So what happens when you want to deploy this to production? Let's go look at what happened when we deployed this in our developer edition org. Let's go ahead and launch that org right now. I'm here in my developer edition org, and I want to show you what happened when I deployed that metadata. So I'm going to look here at deployment status. This is where I can see all the deployments that have run for this environment. And we can see our successful deployment that we did from the CLI. And when I view details, you can see that I don't get much information about this deployment. I get the name as an 18-digit character ID. I see when I started it and when it completed, and then it was successful. But that's about all I get. And that's because the deployment that's run with the force source deploy command is essentially just deploying. It's not running all your tests. It doesn't have a rollback mechanism if there's an error. So you might get a partial deploy that succeeds. That's why it's really meant for lower developer environments. When you have a more high fidelity environment where you need things to roll back on error, you need to make sure that you're invoking all of your tests appropriately, you're going to use some slightly different commands. But what happens when I need to deploy to a higher fidelity environment where I need to make sure my tests are running and that we roll back on error? Well, I'm going to use two different commands to make sure we have a higher fidelity deployment. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the format of the source I have here on my local machine from the format that is used with force source push or force source deploy, those faster deployment methods, to one that has more fidelity, the metadata API. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert this. And we're going to run a, an SFDX force source convert, because I'm converting from DX source format to metadata API format. And I provide two flags for this command. One, the R flag tells me where does the source I need to convert live. And that's my force app folder, as you can see right there. And the second flag is the D flag for where should this live, the output directory for my converted source. And now we're going to collapse this folder. And you can see I've created an empty folder called metadata format source. And that's where I want to store it. And because I'm in VS Code, I can right click and use the context menu to copy the relative path for this folder. So let's do that and paste it into our terminal. Not the most complicated path, but you're going to find that a useful thing as you're working. So let's run this command and get our source converted. And here we go. Already now, in my metadata format source folder is my same metadata plus a package XML. And this is what helps the metadata API be able to correctly deploy my source. So now that I've converted my source, the next step is to run a metadata deploy. So let's find out more about this command. Again, we can go. SFDX force metadata API is the family of commands we're interested in here. And I want to know about more about the deploy command. So I'm going to use that double dash help to get information about this command. And you can see this command has a lot of flags because you can do a lot with it. You can see that we can use the C flag to do a check only deployment. If I just want to verify that things deploy the way I want, I pass in that flag. If I want to be able to send in specific metadata, Again, like we just did, I could use the D flag to do the directory. I can set a whole bunch of other parameters here. But I'm just going to go ahead and run a simulated deployment by using our metadata deploy command. So let's do SFDX force metadata API deploy. 
And again, the directory is my metadata format source, which is still on my clipboard from where I copied it before. So let's get this into the terminal and let's run a check only deployment. And now I'm getting a job ID. And as we all know, this can take several minutes, but I know that it's deployed. And if I go into the org, I can check the status of this job in the setup menu. And that's how you deploy, say, to production. In summary, you use the Salesforce CLI to do a lot of things, including create Lightning Web Components, to sync changes between your local machine and a developer environment, whether that's a scratch org or a sandbox, you're going to want to look at the force source commands. And again, you can pass that double dash help when you need to learn more about the command you're interested in. And if you're going to choose to use the CLI to deploy to a higher fidelity org like production or maybe a staging sandbox, you're going to use force source convert to get that into metadata API format and then use the metadata API to deploy. That gives you a higher fidelity deployment that you can track more easily. If you want to learn more, go to the short link and you're going to get a trail mix dedicated to all things Lightning Web Components. We're updating it and adding resources all the time, so please check it out. Thanks for joining me and we'll catch you next time.